a lot of people are asking questions about how do I do solar in my shed. So I've grabbed up some bits and pieces here, uh, just kind of randomly, um, which represent all of the pieces for a solar installation. So what we have here is our solar panels. Um, we have a inverter, uh, a battery, uh, a meter, um, some fuses and some cable and some connectors. So let's get started with this video. Uh, so let's start with our solar panel. Our solar panel is not probably going to be this big. This is actually a single contained unit. So I made this myself. So our solar panels that we buy, these are wired in um, parallel to boost the power that I need for this. So what we mean by parallel is that our solar panels both have a plus and negative and we're wiring them together this way and we have our taps off going to our charge controller or whatever it is. So what we do then is we might want one of these in because we're going to be very anal about how much power we're making so we want this in here and this will display the, um, the voltage and wattage and kilowatt hours that your solar panels are making and pumping out this way. Uh, I'm going to use this, this is one of my um, um, MPPT charge controller sections uh, from the module, once you can get that on the blog um, of how to make the full controller. And um, This one is a 1.5 kilowatt uh, inverter. Now what we do is we'd have our solar panels, this then connects into here um, not, yes it does, uh, it connects into here, um, it goes out to the controller which has got extra wires in that go in line um, and then this spits out our voltage that we want that goes to our battery. Then from our battery we would have wires coming out from our battery going to the inverter like this. Okay, and then obviously we have our plugs on there and that powers our devices. So when we're doing our installation, we must remember that we need to have fuses. So with your commercial panel, you'll probably find that's about 38.6 volts and is probably about 260 watts. So we know that that's our power and our amperage is going to be probably around about 7 maybe 8 amps. So what we want is about a 7 or 8 amp fuse. Yes, you can just about see that. Let me zoom in for you. Uh, zoom in wildly, obviously. So there we go. So, so we have our fuse there, which protects our panels. So you might find that the wire that comes from here um, what you will have is um, at more than substantial. So the current will break if there's a fault on here. This is going to break. This is going to go to your charge controller, which we said would be this device here. Um, and that will be set up then and go out to your batteries. Now, there's no connection anywhere else. You'll have your battery. Hang on, which way have I got to go? Let's zoom back out a little bit there. So you have your battery bank there and that can be 12 or 24 volts or it could be 48 volts it depends on really how you're doing it so what we have here is essentially what we want to do is just literally connect our solar panels via a fuse to the charge controller um, this might have a display on it or all, all other types of things it might have a USB connector could have anything on it really so loads of different types loads of different brands so there's going to be PWM which is pulse switch modulations or MPPT which is maximum power point tracking maximum power tracking ones will always have a inductor inside them this what happens is these MOSFETs so let's go into a little bit of technical detail here these MOSFETs are just switches and they will switch about 120 times a second so if I've got a MOSFET let's try not to break everything so I've got this switch that goes on and off and charges a capacitor which is one of these 
it goes in, it charges that capacitor up. So as the power goes through, and this goes on and off, it's able to control the power. And you'll get like a little wobbly line, which is the switching frequency of this switch going in here. The more time it's off, the lower the voltage. The more time it's on, the higher the voltage. And this is your output. But an interesting thing happens with these inductors. What they do is they get a magnetic field in there, and it builds up the current. And what it does then is, as you build up the current, you can have a 7 amp panel putting out 10 amps of current. So your current coming out from here may be higher than what your solar is making. So what happens is that an inductor reduces or stops the it doesn't like changing current and the capacitor doesn't like changes in voltage so our voltage regulation is between the capacitor and the switches and then we have a diode on here now a diode only allows electric to flow in one direction so what we don't want is the power coming from the battery back up through the switch and back up to the solar panel and that's why we have diodes in that the fuse is just to protect the solar panels so that they don't become overwhelmed with current. And so what we have is our charge controller. Now our charge controller will work differently depending on what we get. But an MPPT is kind of essential. Now PWM will work with 12 volts, will work with 24 volts, only on the basis of what your solar panels are going to actually provide. So... If you have a 12 volt battery and an MPP, um, a PWM charge controller, by the time you get over to your solar panels, if that voltage difference is too big, they can't actually produce that voltage. Whereas an MPPT can chuck all the rest of the power into its um, inductor and capacitor, and it works much better that way. So make sure that you your panel voltage with an MPPT, not going to be a big issue, um, but with a PWM it can be a big issue. So all you're doing then is putting in this, so solar panels to charge controller to battery. That's it, just look at it as a battery charger. What we're doing then is our inverter will come from your battery. Don't put the inverter on the load on top of on your um, on your little charge controller because they're usually only uh, cheap little MOSFETs like these little switches or these diodes um, and what happens is that um, all the load goes through this this causes it to heat up and then what you get is a lovely fire in your shed so your battery and inverter are then connected that together so you would have these go up to these are soldered on this is just that right let's get rid of that bit of it shall we so what you have is your battery terminals and what you don't want to do is run it from the load so what you would have is one connection uh, positive and negative obviously go straight out to your inverter with a fuse in between it yes that's important because these switches can break on off and send current either way so what you don't want to do is dump your huge kilowatt or two three four kilowatts of power back into this because it will break and catch fire so what we do is we avoid those by um, putting a fuse in so we have a fuse on the um, power line which goes to your inverter now if you're using a inverter what will happen is you can have 12 volts and you can have 24 volts and usually a 48 volt there is a 36 volt but we won't go into those so if I'm making one kilowatt that's my output power at AC um, it's half the current yes so this is important because your current draw will be exactly the same across both of these so what you don't want to do is end up with uh, too much power draw across both of the um, things so what you have is on your 12 volts you might have 83 amps 24 amps 42 amps and 48 volts 21 amps now if we're using lead acid which was previously existing here we don't want to go over 55 amps on that technology 
LFPs or lithium iron phosphate batteries they all go up to probably around 100 amps but that's depending on the battery type that you have so what I don't want to do is go out of focus here um, so what we need to do is if we had a 24 volt system at, then with lead acid we're at 42 amps which is perfectly fine so when we're connecting the batteries up and we want uh, this is say a 12 volt battery what we have is our plus and minuses now if we want to run them in series we have plus to the minus of the next battery and then the plus off of that battery becomes your positive and the minus on this battery stays your minus so what you do then is it doubles up your voltage so that will bring you up to a 24 obviously four of them in a row um, is for your 48 and if you link them positive to positive this isn't a short um, it's called a parallel connection and then you basically have um, a bus bar or something is a good idea um, to power off both of these going to your inverter so you need these these are mc4 connections these will be on the back of your solar panels uh, usually connected with a big black wire uh, this is a red version of it um, this basically fits in together locks in together and gives you a watertight seal when you connect connecting up so you'll have a wire that comes off um, from the solar panel going to your charge controller and as you can see when we make these we make them so that they can do the uh, current and voltage so hopefully that's explained a little bit about how it works so what you want to do then is work out what sort of power you're going to be using now people tend to underestimate their power quite a bit and let's come back up to my ugly face so oh there we go so what you should have is a basic idea of how it works so let's just go through it quickly again we have our solar panels a fuse for our solar panels between the solar panels and the charge controller we then run a separate set of lines down from the output of the charge controller to our battery there should be a fuse here now the fuse will be the maximum current of your charge controller you can have your battery set up any way you want to it's in 12 or 24 or 48 volts which will be dependent on what your inverter is and how you've got your batteries configured of course so hopefully then this should give you a good idea of how your inverter is going to work and how much current you're going to be using depending on your tech so a thousand divided by 12 or a thousand divided by 24 or a thousand divided by 48 will give you the current draw at that particular wattage, particular wattage that you're drawing or your load that's on your on your um, inverter so there should be a fuse in between there which should be equal to your voltage and your current at your maximum power not the peak power the maximum power of your inverter so if I had a 1 kilowatt inverter and a 12 volt battery I would want an 83 amp or 80 amp um, fuse in there so I know that I can't overload my inverter or batteries um, from that system although 83 I wouldn't want to do um, on a series battery that would be a paralleled battery um, on 24 volts I would want um, 42 amps um, on there for my one kilowatt draw or I would want um, a 21 amp which would probably be 25 or 30 amp fuse on a 48 volt system which would run my inverter so hopefully that's given you a clear uh, view of what you need to do if you're DIYing your own solar systems um, and it should be fairly simple and straightforward so our battery are all our fuses are there to protect the cable or device at the other end so just make sure that your fuses are in line and in order to protect uh, what you what you want to use now you will do the math on that which is the wattage divided by the voltage to give you the amperage um, and they are your amperage of your fuses so I think that's fairly simple and straightforward if there are any questions uh, click through to the video link on the um, uh, comments on the bottom and uh, go from there thank you bye